Remember to stay hydrated. And yeah, that's a new water bottle in collaboration with my channel and All American Maker. If you guys are into Nalgene bottles, then I suggest that you follow me on Instagram every.day.minimalist because these are going to be going live very soon. But in this video, we're going to be talking about the brand new Benchmade Narrows. For now, sit back, relax, and let's get it. So I've been carrying the new Benchmade Narrows for a few months now, and I think I'm ready to give you guys my full impressions. We'll be covering all the negatives, the positives, and who I think this knife is for. First off, let's get some specifications put away. So we're looking at a total close length of about 4.5 inches. When you go to open it up, we're looking at a total length of about 8 inches. The blade length is coming in at about 3.44 inches, and this thing is an absolute featherweight coming in at about 2.41 ounces, which is just ridiculous for this full size size knife. It also has this really nice anodization on the pocket clip, pivot, thumb stud, backspacers, and backspacer screws. Now the Narrows is Benchmade's first step back into titanium ever since the Benchmade Anthem. If you guys know me, I absolutely love titanium and I love the Anthem. This is one of my most favorite knives literally ever, but there are going to be quite a few differences between these two knives. So the Anthem is going to be quite a bit thicker than the Narrows. The Anthem is a discontinued integral knife, so it is milled out of one solid piece of titanium, whereas the Narrows is going to be two slabs of titanium screwed together. Let me give you a quick size comparison between the Bug Out and the Narrows, just because I'm assuming if you are watching this video, then you might be a Benchmade fan, but this Narrows is going to be even thinner than the Bug Out by about 30%. That's a significant decrease in total width, especially if we're comparing one of the most lightweight knives available, but the Narrows does it really well. Let's open these up and show you side by side. As you can tell, the Narrows is going to be quite quite a bit bigger than the bug out in pretty much every dimension aside from the thickness. Before we jump into the negatives and positives of the Narrows, let's give a quick word for today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by the House of Blades, a premier knife dealer located in Fort Worth, Texas. I had the opportunity to visit House of Blades down at Blade Show, Texas, and man, do they have one of the coolest knife shops that I've ever been to. They pretty much stock every single knife brand that you can possibly imagine, anywhere from Benchmade, Spyderco, Chris Reeve, knives, Microtech, and a bunch of others. We also had the chance to check out their really cool laser engraving service. That laser room is just absolutely insane. If you guys want to do any customization to your blades or even how your Yeti water bottles, you can actually just send over your files and they will get that custom logo or whatever it is on whatever object you're laser engraving. If you guys are interested in getting a knife from House of Blades, make sure that you use code EDM for 10% off your entire order. Thank you so much to House of Blades for sponsoring our channel. Let's get back to the video. Now that we've got specs and size comparisons put away, let's go over the negatives first about this knife. The first negative would be the price of this thing. A lot of people are freaking out over it, and I can understand it. It comes in at about $500 to $550 for this single knife, which is an astronomical amount. In that upper echelon area, you're going to be compared to like Chris Reeve knives, Hinderer knives, and a few others. And with the Narrows coming in at that price point, it is pretty steep. Now, the second negative I have on this knife is the overall aesthetic. In my opinion, this is not as sleek and as modern as the Anthem. The the Anthem is actually a lesser expensive knife when it was on shelves, but in my personal opinion, I think the Anthem just looks a lot more aesthetically pleasing. I just don't really like this portion of the handle and this portion of the handle. It just doesn't really fit well with me. Of course, ergonomically, that is going to work better, but we'll cover that in the positives here in just a second. Moving on to the positives, there are quite a few. First off, this thing absolutely disappears in the pocket. If you think the bug out disappears, this thing is even thinner. To give you a reference, I actually forgot that I was carrying carrying a Narrows when I was walking around on my nightly walk with Ashley. And this thing is absolutely perfect for someone that wants to have a really nice knife on them, but not have it be cumbersome. The next thing I really like about the Narrows is the blade steel that they went with. M390 is one of my more favorite blade steels out there. It's not as good as Magna Cut in my opinion, but M390 is a push forward. Benchmade knives usually come with S30V on their lower tier stuff. Having M390 on there is going to be a plus. The next positive I have for this knife is the axis lock locking mechanism. This thing feels completely different from any other Benchmade in my collection. And that's because they completely revised the axis lock mechanism for this knife to make it that much thinner. The crossbar locking mechanism is quite a bit different. I forgot what they actually call it, but it feels way more robust than what they had before. Apparently it's about 45% percent 
much stronger than the original access lock locking mechanism, which is a really good thing because a lot of people report that, hey, their Omega Springs are snapping. I've not had that issue with the Narrows. The next positive I have for the Narrows is how slicey it is. This thing will literally just cut through anything like it's butter. And that's just due to the fact of the blade stock being so ridiculously thin. Now you're definitely not gonna wanna pry things with it. It's literally made to slice things. And I can almost guarantee you that you will break the tip if you do that. So if you do pick up this knife, just make sure that you're safe with it. And the last positive I have for this knife is the overall build quality. This thing feels extremely robust, even though it comes in at about 2.4 ounces. There's literally no other full-size folding knife coming in at that weight class that feels as robust as the Narrows. I can literally just squeeze these scales together and there is absolutely no flex. This is definitely a robust knife. So who do I think this knife is for? I believe it's the perfect knife for someone that collects Benchmade knives and they would just want to add this thing to their collection or the complete opposite, the person that just wants a single reliable knife. This thing was made to be ultra lightweight, very similar to that super expensive titanium utensils that you see in camping gear. And you can really feel that robust quality come through in the Narrows. So if you're someone that's looking for a one and done type of knife, I believe the Narrows would actually be a good pick for you. Now, I don't recommend this knife if you're limited on a budget, if you're brand new to knives and EDC, go explore the more budget options before you get into something high end like the Narrows. Overall, this knife is pretty sweet and it's my most favorite feather light knife that I own. It gets my stamp of approval just because of my experience with it. Aside from that, thank you guys so much for spending your time with me today. If you like this video, throw me a thumbs up. If you disliked it, throw me a thumbs down and I promise to you I'll do better next time. You guys have a fantastic rest of your day and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.